and a good Friday morning to you. I'm meteorologist Peyton Malone. Thanks so much for joining me for our 10 a.m. update on what's going on out in the tropics. We are heading into the weekend here and we are tracking a tropical disturbance. Fortunately, it does not look like a major issue and this actually could be pretty beneficial for portions of Texas where the ongoing drought is still the main issue out there. So take a look at your screen here. What you're looking at is a tropical disturbance and really it's a trough of low pressure, a bunch of showers and storms essentially that has uh, been developing over uh, over southeast Louisiana for the past several days. That's where the disturbance is now. Notice it's heading west and it will have a low chance to develop as it makes its way towards south central Texas. Notice staying south of Houston, south of San Antonio, more towards like Corpus Christi and down towards Brownsville could see some rainfall and moisture from this developing system. So right now, still very unorganized. The chances of development development continue to run pretty low. That could go up. It just depends on what this thing does in the next 48 hours. So this has today and tomorrow over the water and then it's moving inland. So fortunately, it does not have a lot of time over the water, which is great news because we're in August and the Gulf of Mexico, it can throw surprises at you in August, but fortunately doesn't have a lot of time to do that. So looking at radar this morning, what I've put on here is the radar and wind direction, and it really paints the picture on what's going on with this tropical disturbance. It shows that we do have not only circulation in the mid levels, but we do have surface level circulation because you can see that in your wind barb. So you can see the winds go from out of the south down here in the Gulf to the east on the northerly side of that trough of low pressure, that wave, and then out of the northeast to the north. So there is a circulation in here, no doubt about it, because you can see it in the winds as it wraps around. So your disturbance itself is going to be centered somewhere in here. That's where we've got a broad circulation. So what we'll be watching over the next 48 hours is as the circulation continues to move west, it'll get over to the warm waters and we'll see how much it can organize. So that's what we'll be watching through the rest of today and especially into Saturday. Saturday will be the day where if this thing is going to try to become a depression, that's most likely when it will do it. Of course, it's moving over very, very warm waters. What you can see here is uh, the trough is currently right in there, so it's heading right over some of the warmest water in the Gulf of Mexico in the mid to upper 80s. It's got the fuel for it. The other question is, uh, with it being so unorganized right now, it doesn't have enough time to become a depression. Our models in high resolution guidance seems to think it's a possibility. I'll start at the beginning here. Notice as we go out in time through today, still a big blob of showers and storms, basically a few pop up storms over southeast Louisiana and then continues to head west. This is tomorrow morning, early in the morning. Notice We'll likely start to see a big burst of convection overnight and in the morning, and that's when it will have its best chance to try to organize into that depression. The big question right now is do we get a dominant center of circulation somewhere near the center that has showers and storms firing around it? That's what would make it a depression there, but that is a possible scenario by tomorrow morning. And then by tomorrow afternoon, rain moving into South Texas with a landfall sometime Saturday evening into Saturday night. So it's moving fairly quickly and as you see they're moving west away from southeast Louisiana. So regardless of development, our impacts on the northern Gulf Coast, Louisiana, Mississippi aren't really going to change all that much. Now Texas once again needs this rainfall, so they're hoping for it. It does look like most of this will stay south of Houston. So if you're going to be in Houston for the Saints preseason game uh, this weekend, I think a lot of the active weather will be to the south mainly staying south of San Antonio as well, but from Corpus to Brownsville, we'll have the best chance of seeing some of that heavier rainfall. So we've got the warm waters. Honestly, wind shear is not going to be that high. There's a little wind shear today, but by tomorrow morning into tomorrow afternoon, Saturday, I think that wind shear could relax enough, and that's what will give this the chance to try to wrap up into a uh, depression. And, you know, it's not... Uh, impossible for it to become a name storm. That's just extremely unlikely. It's got a long ways to go before it gets to that point. But if it becomes organized enough and if there's wind sustained near 40 miles an hour, then it would technically get a name. But right now that seems like the more of unlikely scenarios at the 10 a.m. hour on Friday. Remember, things evolve sometimes, so we'll watch it. All of our models seem to agree that, yes, we've got the mid-level circulation. Now we know we've got surface level circulation looking at those surface winds. And as we go into tomorrow, GFS and Euro both agree that circulation, whatever it may be, moves into South Texas near Corpus, and that's where the heaviest rain will be. What's steering this thing to the west? Well, it's riding around a big ridge of high pressure that's centered over parts of Texas, so that's what's going to steer this thing to the west here and into South Texas. So unfortunately, that means if you're Houston, Austin, Dallas, North Texas, 
you're probably not going to see much in the way of anything from this, which is where some really bad drought situations are ongoing as well. So this will be mainly a South Texas rainmaker, extreme South Texas rainmaker. Rainfall totals, they could be quite hefty in a few areas. Some of our models are spitting out some over four to eight inches of rainfall. That's great for Texas. That's great for the drought. Some may see more, others obviously less, but notice the further north you get, San Antonio, Houston, Austin, I wouldn't bet on picking up any drought busting rain from this. And that are some of the areas where you need most of the rainfall. Of course, as we go through the weekend, we'll keep you updated through YouTube or wherever you're watching us here. Maybe some of our streaming services or social media. Make sure you go follow me. I'm on Facebook at meteorologist Peyton Malone WWL TV. I'm also on Twitter. We update there frequently at Peyton Malone WX or just search Peyton Malone WWL. Same thing on Instagram or if you have any questions or want to send in any visuals, you can direct message any of those accounts or do it the old fashioned way. Send an email to P Malone at WWL tv.com but for now we're watching that one disturbance in the tropics low chance of developing fortunately doesn't have a lot of time over the water so it may organize some the gulf is boiling hot it's august a lot, and a lot of wind shear sometimes these little things can sneak up on us but for now it looks like it's going to be mainly a rainmaker for south texas which they need desperately but for now that's going to do it thanks for joining me have a great and safe weekend